Because I just gave Bruce mine because he didn't find me in the box and then they told no, me they're okay. This was the planning version. Okay. So. Check this out. I like to call this point meeting of the select board and what you decide to recreate in order. Maybe six days. On uh, Wednesday, April 5th, 2023, at 5.30 p.m., please join me in the flag. Okay. Uh, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No, I know who's here. Alright, this time we would like to elect the chairperson of the advisory board, so we're looking for any nominations. Nominate Jack Duchamp. Second. Uh, motion and a second for Jack Duchamp. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of Jack Duchamp on the advisory board? So like all in favor, Jack. Congratulations. Thank you. That's all you want. Um, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna get started here tonight. Just to want to remind everybody that we are here to build a to bring recommendations from the select board and the advisory board to town meeting. Tonight we're not here to discuss the school budget. We're not here to discuss the county budget, and we're not here to discuss the um, tax. What the taxes are going to be. So. Um, that, those are three things that we're gonna we're gonna stay focused on what we're doing here. Uh, so, number letter C, operational budget, and we'll turn it over to the town manager for a few words. For a few minutes. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I printed out a revenue sheet that I'm not really gonna spend a whole lot of time on, but if, any, if anybody needs a revenue sheet, um, I've got extra copies. I, printed, I, I made them on Monday because I needed to have the month of February closed before I could get an accurate number on this. But anybody want an extra revenue sheet? So what I'd just generally like to talk about is from this part of the packet right here, which is right behind your agenda. Um, as you can see, I got quite creative with my cut and paste pictures uh, at the beginning, and then I just kind of lost interest and just gave you a bunch of words uh, and numbers. So, but I, I'd like to use this idea of this year's budget as a transitional budget, because I'm looking back for a 10-year window. And most of you know that two years ago, 2014, was the beginning of the, of the devaluation of Madison Paper. Most of you remember because your taxes went up. Um, so Madison Paper started at $230 million, and by the end of 2014, it was valued at $80 million. And that means all of our property taxes had to go up to account for that. And so that, that fall, following year was my first budget. And so the leaders at the time, were guiding me through an, an emergency budget process. And that emergency budget process meant we cut certain things out, we eliminated positions. Uh, if people left, we didn't hire a new person, those job duties got spread around. And we started use a lot, utilizing revenues from TIF to fund our operating uh, expenses. And for the subsequent years, we got into the practice or I should say we continued the practice of using carry forward money. So now as we come to this transitional budget, I believe it's responsible to look forward and try to wean ourselves off of a dependence on TIF revenues and wean ourselves off of utilizing carry forward every year. And so in this packet, I've kind of broken down a couple of specific things I'm talking about. But I want to refer quickly to page two and talk about backyard farms. Somebody asked me about uh, explaining TIFs and I thought, you know, Bill Van Tynan did a great job of explaining TIFs, but we don't have eight hours. Um, and Bill, God bless him, just talked at a certain speed and a certain level. Uh, I picked up a lot from Bill over the years and 
this spread or this uh, slide here basically shows you the fact that backyard farms, as of right now, pays about nine hundred thousand dollars in taxes a year. Of that, the town keeps about four hundred eighty, and in our agreement, they get four hundred twenty thousand back each year. That's used to finance their investment in, in Madison. So that's kind of the credit enhancement agreement. So Backyard Farms is 18 years into a 20-year agreement. So in, in 2025, this deal where they get 420000 back goes away. And so two things are going to happen. One of two things are going to happen. Uh, they're going to come to us and say, we'd like to renegotiate for another 10 years and we'd like to still keep getting this large amount of money back, or they're going to say, um, we're done investing in Madison, and we're either going to sell this uh, or liquidate it, uh, or we're just going to stop investing in it, and we'd like you to lower our valuation. So that 900000 means they're valued at about $50 million. When this credit enhancement agreement <coughs> ends, they may come to the town and say, we know we're not worth $50 million anymore. We want you to reevaluate us. And now we're right back to 2014 with Madison Paper, where you have a large taxpayer wanting a revaluation. Now, it's not nearly as severe as Madison Paper, but these are the realities that I think the public, and especially the folks that work on the budget, uh, need to know. So I think the worst case scenario is they decide not to invest, they liquidate and close. When you liquidate, all the equipment that they have that we're paying taxes on, we're getting tax revenues on, all that equipment becomes inventory and you can't tax it anymore. That's exactly what happened with the paper machine 10 years ago. So that, I'm just trying to give you an idea that I think our reliance on TIF, we need to start thinking uh, about it differently because this agreement may change in two years. On the bottom of that sheet, I thought I'd give you just a couple of uh, other large taxpayers. Eagle Creek, we went through many years of battling over the valuation of those hydro facilities that used to be owned by Madison Paper. Uh, right now, the portion that we, the Madison owns, um, are valued at just under $31 million. We came up with a four-year agreement with Eagle Creek and, and settled on that number uh, for the next two years. They're going to come, Eagle Creek's going to come in 2025 and ask for a revaluation uh, of those hydro facilities. Um, and then, of course, Timber HP. You know, God willing, they will start production this month and they have one equipment line in and tested and ready to go. Currently, their valuation is based on $2.6 million. That's just for the blue and white building. <coughs> what we're going to tax them at this year, this August, the improvements to that building will raise its value up to about 4.7, plus they've got about $6.5 million worth of equipment in there that's ready to go. Hopefully, by this time next year, the building value will be up to seven million, and they'll have about twenty-five million dollars worth of equipment in there operating that can we can utilize for our tax revenues. Just by comparison, because what happens? The average taxpayer, they read the paper, the mill closes, my taxes go up. Then they read the paper, the mill opens, now my taxes will go. No, they won't. <laughs> because the old paper machine was worth $200 million. <clears throat> so if we get a quarter of the revenue out of Timber HP that we got out of Madison Paper, we'll be fortunate. And in the good old days, Madison Paper paid $4 million out of our $8 million tax bill. So they paid 50, 60 cents on, on the dollar. So just a brief word on page three about carry forward. Um, this was a hot topic this past year because uh, there was some debate amongst the board and in public and even members of the uh, advisory committee uh, didn't really have a grasp or understand why we do this. Carry forwards is, is a practice that many towns have used and this town has used all the way back as far as when Norm Dean was here that if you underspent your budget a department head could ask the select board to carry forward what they didn't spend to the next year. One of the benefits of that is that you're not raising more to be taken from taxation to be able to fund certain things that a department head needs to have done. And it kind of rewards that department head for not spending out all of their budget. Um, the downside of it is it is not the budget that the town meeting approved. And so you're actually moving a, a small amount of money around that wasn't necessarily approved at town meeting. 
And MMA is getting tighter on this and what they recommend, Maine Municipal, what they recommend to towns. And they're recommending to towns that you do more through town meeting and less outside of town meeting. So just on the page three, there are the examples of the money that we've carried forward. And I've always separated them into capital and non-capital. Um, and then on the bottom of the page, it gives examples of what we carried forward money for. Computer upgrades, natural gas conversions, uh, the beautiful room here, uh, the parking lot out there. All that was not budgeted, but we needed to have it for a 2020 election. Um, and so that's what carry forward was for. So, wasn't a lot of that for the, the 2020 was COVID funds took care of some of that? Nope, we didn't have COVID funds yet. So when we did that election, we were right in the middle of 2020. The COVID money didn't come for the next year. So we'll talk about that. So on page four is my recommendations going forward with the carry forward. Uh, I'm going to recommend that we eliminate the practice of non-capital carry forward starting this year. That money will go to the general fund and we'll be able to bring more money from undesignated fund balance to offset taxes. But we're still going to need to have an article at town meeting to authorize the Board of Selectmen to carry forward capital funds. Because when you buy a fire truck or a plow truck that's two years out, instead of raising $400,000 from people in one fell swoop, you can do it over staggered years if you carry that money forward. So the bottom of page four is probably uh, pretty significant to the work that we're doing tonight. This budget right now is a $3.88 million budget. That's a 9% increase over last year. We're going to have these two sources of revenue to pull from to reduce <coughs> the impact to the taxpayer. We're still using revenue from TIF. I'm going to recommend that we sunset that. But the undesignated fund balance is a higher than normal average. Normally we run between two and 400,000. We have a significant fund balance. Uh, and part of that is COVID money. Uh, part of that is um, money that we didn't carry forward a couple of years ago because of COVID fears. Uh, and that money has accrued to the point where I'm comfortable with uh, taking a larger amount. So that's the intention of that is to reduce the impact to the taxpayer to uh, about a 3.3% increase to the budget. Last couple of pages, um, sunsetting TIF revenues. <laughs> I mentioned that we would recommend bringing 120 from TIF to offset taxes this year. That figure was as high as 277,000. So when I talk about <clears throat> trending away from dependence on TIF, I've been doing this every year, trying to get that number lower, get that number lower. Last year was 150, this year I recommend 120. I'm going to recommend phasing that out in a couple of years so that we don't utilize that money to, to offset our operating expenses. But we're still going to have that TIF revenue coming to the town. So what do we do with it? We need infrastructure work. We need many roads, many sewer projects, storm drain projects in town. It's a little easier now because the weather's warmed up. But I invite you to go down Bean Street at 20 miles an hour <laughs> in February. You'll not make it. Guarantee it. And th th those are just one of many projects. So I, I'm going to recommend that we put some money away for these infrastructure projects down the road. I mentioned a couple of them there. Uh, tonight you'll be voting on capital projects. Uh, there's four recommended highway equipment. Um, we're trying to purchase two plow trucks this year. One we've already got a bid for uh, and awarded the bid for a single axle truck using money that we have already in the bank. Uh, we're going to put away money for a, uh, a wheeler or a double axle truck. Uh, 230000 road paving, some sidewalks and cemetery work that needs to be completed. So the very back page here, and we'll get to these later in the meeting, these are the articles that I'm going to ask both the select board to approve <coughs> and the budget committee to approve. And uh, some of them are standard that we've done before. Uh, $25,000 uh, to deal with any overruns. Uh, that's uh, something we've done the last several years. Uh, appropriating uh, COVID money, uh, ARPA funds. And then talking about if we'll want to create articles that will deal with carry forward. 
And then, of course, the last one will be money that we bring forward from undesignated fund balance. So with that, I would recommend that Chairman Dinsey and we start going through the budget, and we'll take questions as we go. All right. So number one, general government, administration 0101, planning board 0102, code enforcement office 0103, boards and committees uh, 0104, elections 0105, and assessing 0108. And these are on page one, two, and three. Um, town managers are recommending $733,545. Pleasure of the select board. So three pages is, is a lot to to write off all at once, and I'm assuming that everybody is experienced enough to know what they're looking at here. Um, all the way over in the corner, you have expenses for each category from 21 to 22. Uh, you have the, the budget. The yellow line is the operating budget we've been utilizing this year that has some carry forward in it. And then the, the blue purple line over on the end uh, is the proposed budget for this year. Uh, some of the increases in general government have to do with wage increases. Uh, the selectmen have approved a 5% increase for uh, office staff uh, pretty much across the board. Um, one of the other big things is, is heating oil. Um, we have locked in on a price of $3.15 a gallon uh, with Bob's, and uh, I think that will help us. But the fact of the matter is, you can see that if you look about two-thirds of the way down the page on the heating fuel, we budgeted $6,000. We've already spent $10,000 this year. Um, so that's just one of the, the facts of life that we're, we're dealing with at this point. Does anybody have any questions on the item of the table? If you turn to page two, these are the line items that we utilize every day in the office. Costs for computers, costs for software, um, uh, everything we need essentially to, to operate uh, as an administrative budget is there. So bottom of page two, you'll see the total administration, which is the town office essentially. The total administration is up about 4%. So no questions on page two. Jim? Yes. Why has health insurance gone down too much? Because we have less people utilizing health insurance. There are some people that have it on their spouses. Right. Yeah. So page three is are the remaining categories under general governments. So you have planning board, code enforcement, boards and committees, elections, and tax assessment. Everything else is, everything in there is pretty static with the exception of code enforcement. So the budget that we operated with this year was $52,750. Um, as many of you know, I asked the board for a $25,000 carry forward so we could maintain a full-time code officer in that position. <coughs> that was not granted. And so we are operating with basically code enforcement by committee at this point. Um, Jay Watt is the appointed code officer. He, he responds to calls when he's available. If there's something that Jay can't do, I, I reach out to David Savage, um, who has been appointed our backup. He's the code officer over in North Um And I, I'm there every day at the office, so I field most of the calls uh, for code enforcement and try to direct them. Um, as you are aware, uh, the snow is gone, and when the snow is gone, uh, the coverage for bags of garbage uh, is gone. And so we get calls every day about properties that are just an absolute mess. Um, and so we have to attend uh, to those as best we can. So I am proposing for a full-time position, code officer, uh, facilities maintenance person. Uh, so in the new budget this year, that is up uh, significantly. Uh, it's up from 52.7 to 81.7. Uh, and that includes a full-time position with benefits. Uh, if you notice the line at the bottom of that section that says contracted planner, uh, the Town of Madison contracts with the Kennebec Valley Council of Governments, KB Cog. They provide a planner to us. Uh, the Town of Scott Vegan does the same thing. Uh, KB Cog charges us a, a, a rate of $63 an hour for that person's time to come to our planning board meetings. Um, 
And this year, you can see we've spent about $1,700. We just got another bill for about $1,200. So we'll, we'll end up spending most of that $5,000. Uh, one of the benefits, if you have a experienced full-time code officer, they eventually could take that position as the contractor planner. So the town doesn't have to do it. The reason we have had a contractor planner is we have not been able to keep a code officer. And so that's, that's the benefit for that. So with the changes to code, it brings the bottom line of general government up just under 8% at 733,545. Any questions or thoughts? All right, what is the board's thoughts, motions, recommendations? Mr. Moody. Yeah, I'll make a motion. On total general government at 733 All right, we have a motion and a second to recommend at town meeting by the selectmen and general government for $733,545. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Chairman Newsom? You heard the motion made and accepted by the selectmen for the general government. What's your pleasure? I make a motion we accept. Second. The 733 It's been moved and seconded that we accept the 733 545. Any further questions or discussions from the advisory board? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor. Can I ask who, who made Thank the you. second? Second. Sure. second. Right here. <laughs> All right, number two, public safety. Number two, public safety. Ambulance 0501, police 0503, fire department 0506, animal control 0508. And we are on page number four and five. Town manager is recommending $815,675.07. So I'll go over a couple of these categories. Uh, ambulance is pretty simple. They, they set their rate based on your population. Um, and so they didn't see a significant change this year. Uh, but I padded it $500 just because I think we're going to run close to that $81,000 figure. All right, police contract. Um, last, this current budget, we have contracted, pardon me, to pay from taxation $480,000. But the police contract, police budget that we're actually the yeah, the police budget that we're actually working with this year is six hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So over the years, we have utilized money raised from taxation and money we have saved from previous budgets in the policing category to fund that budget. And. We had $140,000 left over from previous policing budgets that we put towards the one that we're in right now. That's why we only raised from the taxpayer $480,000. That budget we're in right now pays for three patrol officers, an admin person, and a school resource officer. Uh, the school resource officer that we had in that position was very popular, very well liked. Uh, but she chose to leave early on in the budget year, and she went to work for the town of Pittsburgh. So that school resource office, officer position has been empty for probably seven of the last nine months. Going forward, the number we got from the sheriff's office this year was a budget of $640,000 for just three patrol people and one admin person. We didn't bother to put the SRO in there because we would have been looking at a budget over 700,000. The reason it's so expensive is the Somerset County was the lowest paid entry level law enforcement positions in the city. They were in a union contract that expires this year. So they have entered into contract negotiations and they have resulted in a significant increase to the entry level positions and as such increased all the other positions in, in the county. So what you are paying for 
is you are paying six hundred and fifty thousand. We're utilizing a little savings, so the taxpayer is only paying five eighty nine. But all you, I hate to say it this way, all you're paying for is three patrol officers dedicated to this area, and they are county uh, sheriffs that are scheduled to cover Madison on a two-week rotation. There's not always the same deputies in, in Madison. Um, in addition to the officers that from the county, or how many total officers are there? Three. Three that are dedicated to Madison. There are there are 16 positions in the county. Three of those are Madison. So so you have 13 that are hired by the sheriff to cover the entire county. And then you have three that are dedicated to be scheduled towards Madison. So lots, lots of different questions come up when we're talking about this. I'll anticipate some more if you're free to ask. Um, why don't we just pay our regular amount to the county like Anson and Nordwalk does? So if we did that, on paper, you'd save $589,000, but you would have three less people covering the county. And so the commissioners have already told the sheriff they're not going to absorb it. So those are just three positions that will be lost. H however you want to look at it, what Madison is doing is subsidizing three patrol positions, including uh, pay and benefits, all the necessary equipment, a cruiser, uh, and everything else that's associated with that position. That's essentially what you're paying for, plus an admin person in, in Madison. So that, that's what that budget is for. If we were to go back and say, let's build our own police department again. Uh, Mr. Vinciano made a good point about this at the last meeting. This is not something you can spring on people at town meeting, because we're definitely not prepared for that. You would have to start probably a few months to get a committee of people to take a look at what it would cost and how you could do it, if it's even feasible, and then prepare that for next year's uh, town meeting. But I can tell you, the biggest savings that we have is you have the sheriff acting as the administrator for our police coverage. If you didn't have that and you wanted to start your own, you'd have to hire a chief. And it's slim pickings right now uh, for law enforcement in, in general. So, so any, any questions, comments, thoughts on law enforcement? Oh my. Can you give a little bit of a um, lesson on, or information on the school resource officer in regards to why it hasn't been filled, lack of people, <coughs> the way it's been advertised? What's your take on that? So, school resource officer, in my opinion, is, is a, a round peg in a round hole. You have to have the right person. Uh, in our history, we've had two. Uh, the second one was much better than the first one. And so, Chief Mitchell might be able to answer this question pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> my understanding is they did post the position for an SRO when the SRO left earlier this year. Um, they had a couple people interested in-house, but some of those people that were interested in-house left law enforcement to go work selling parts at a local deal. So that, that's, you know, those, those positions just haven't had any applicants. So, Chief, do you think that's accurate to say you really haven't had much interest in the SRO position? Not yet. Not yet. But I think things are going to change. I think we're going to have a new contract after tomorrow night. And uh, I think that will change things a little bit. But right now, the applicants are coming. I mean, everybody around us doesn't pay a couple dollars more. They pay ten, twenty dollars more than we do. Yeah. And so I've lost a lot of that. A lot of the patrol staff right now have lost to those other agencies. Yeah. So no, that's going to change tomorrow night. I, think. I, I was at a meeting, and the uh, assistant city manager of Waterville was there, and I told him where we were at as far as entry level pay for county deputies, and where they were estimated that they were going to go, and he said. Even if you go there, you're not even close. So yeah. it's, 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 it's the job market that we're in right now. So it doesn't have to be a deputy. An SRO? Yeah, yeah it does. 
Yeah. That's to be sworn law enforcement officer. It does. Okay. So is, that, is that something that we can work on for another year to bring that person back? I mean, I, I know it's very difficult right now to find that person, but I, I think I think it would be a good idea. It certainly would Again, you got to have the right person. So, don't. Yeah, I was just going to kind of follow up on that. Are we still actively seeking one? I, I'm not really comfortable saying we're going to just eliminate looking for somebody. That's the, that's the question of what kind of budget you want to bring to, to town meetings. Right now, the recommendation I'm making at 589 does not include any money for an SRO in the next budget year. But if, if we wanted to plan for that in FY25, then that's something that we can work on budgeting now. If you wanted to, it would be essentially adding another $90,000 to that position. Uh, to, well, to, to make that. It would be a half and half. Can you do something? I don't think it's been half and half with the school. 20. The school, the school has contributed $20,000 towards that. And I don't know if that's in their budget for this year. So. Mr. Newsom. Put shot. it in Monday. <laughs> a question that I've had regarding the, the policing is when we first started this venture, there was a whole lot of, there was a whole lot of uh, sentiment for having a local presence down underneath the where the, the old police department used to be. And I and I just wonder what's the point of that now? I mean if you if you need police service during the middle of the day, you gotta call nine one one and they're dispatched from there and it's like I, I just don't <clears throat> I guess I just don't understand what's the point of having someone sit in an office down there doing paperwork. It makes no sense to me at all when I would much rather take that money and, and put it in as an SRO. I mean, I think, you know, I think the SRO piece is a great piece and we should do that. I, I would concur with, with everybody that's talking about it. Uh, and I'd rather do an SRO than I would an administrator because I think the county's got plenty of administrators that can handle whatever's going on down in that office. And unless somebody can disabuse me of that. My, my conversations with the sheriff regarding this have always come back to the fact that is the general public ready to not have a walk-in presence Monday through Friday, 8, you know, 8 o'clock till 2 o'clock in the afternoon? <clears throat> I know it doesn't sound lot to, like a lot to you, but when you, when you continue to take away a presence from the general public, is that worth it? The number of walk-ins we get is low. I would probably say it's less than one person a day that, that walks in down there. Um, and and the, other, the other thing is that the sheriff does lean on that person to do a lot of the administrative work for the county in, 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 that, in that spot. So, Buster, what's the point? Based on what's happening in our country now, I think we would be very short-sighted to give up an SRO to keep an administrator. I, I think it's better to have that person in the schools than one visitor a day downstairs. I think we can figure that one out, and I think I think the sheriff can probably figure that one out if you can get first. Sure. If you can get first. Bruce, I don't know if we got a swap, but do you know if that's in the budget for this year? Or to be honest, I don't, but it, it's, not. It, it's not. It's not, but it it can be. I mean, I I, I think that it, it's a learning tool also. I mean, it, if you're going to continue to bring in young officers, I mean, it, it's also helping them to deal with the public. And as far as having, to, to their point, an administrator downstairs or, or a resource officer, you're getting much more connection with that person standing downstairs at the junior high in the morning. I mean, we were having major issues with that over the years, and, and that's disappeared um, because of the work that, that Chelsea did. Um, but I think you would get more, a lot more bang for your buck, number one, by having that presence every day, reaching it dozens and dozens of people, students. Um, and the safety part, and, and just having that presence, to, to Paul's point, I think the presence 
is determined. And it's, somebody's not going to be so apt to to do one of these horrible things that are going around the country. You definitely know that there is some. Well, I would agree that it, it needs to be a, or it has to be a unique individual. And then I, the other thing is, is I think it's also how it is posted or what that person does when their school's not in session. So I think that that's part of maybe the issue as well, because as you had said, it's got to be the right person. And then is it going to be, they're also going to have another job when they're not the SRO. But to answer your question, it can be. Okay. Right. So I guess the sheriff is here, so he can help us with this. So sh <laughs> Sheriff, to bring you up to speed, we're talking about the policing budget, and what I've presented to them is a budget for three patrol and one admin with no SRO. The discussion now is, it, it appears that the group would rather see a budget for three patrol and SRO and no admin. Um, so I, I know your answer is every year is you, you build it and we'll make it work. Um, but <coughs> I'm trying to figure out for a budgetary number, um, I, think, I think the vehicle is going to be an issue because if you have an SRO, you're, you're basically adding another patrol person as an SRO and then, then you're factoring another vehicle in for that person. That, that is correct. So it's not just an $80,000 swap for an administrative person to an SRO. It's probably about a difference of about $150,000. At a minimum, yes. Yeah. The, the, uh, uh, the price of uh, cars have gone up. The, the, the labor costs have gone up uh, uh, a lot. Um, so. A hundred an additional hundred and fifty thousand would be very con conservative figure. Where's that would be where's the vehicle that they were using before? And why does it have to be a new vehicle? What's that? When, when the vehicle that, that we don't have a resource officer now because of staffing issues, but isn't there a vehicle that, that the previous person was using or is that yeah, part of the yeah. fleet? Yeah. But when we, when we calculate these budgets, mm -hmm. it used to be we calculated what we would pay for policing and it didn't include set-asides for vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now the sheriff's budget, this 589, includes set-asides for vehicle. Okay. So there's, there's let, let's say these days it's fifty to $55,000 is what you're paying for the quick vehicle. Um, and that's and, and, don't be, that's just the vehicle. The stuff right. inside the vehicle costs almost as much as the vehicle. Yeah, I'm going to say about ninety thousand when it's all done. Yeah, is a vehicle. Yeah. Yes. So they they and they turn over every three years, three or four. Roughly, uh, an SRO vehicle. Uh, there's a couple factors. It, it's uh, usually you get three years out of a vehicle. Uh, in an SRO position, you could extend that because the, it, they wouldn't be doing the active patrol uh, be more of a, um, uh, the, the mileage wouldn't be as high. So you could, ex I, 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 an SRO vehicle, I think you could extend possibly five years. Yeah, they're the only patrolling in the summer. Yeah. So that capital expense can be stretched out. So is that something that we can work on for the next? Oh, I'm sorry. No. So I guess the question I would have is if we eliminate the administration person, wouldn't we still incur administration costs? Right. So right, right now, I, I do not charge. I do not charge the town of Ma Madison for administrative costs. Uh, um, I, I felt I, you know, and I, and I have to be honest. Uh, I have had uh, some. Um, healthy discussions with commissioners in the past trying to, wanting me to charge administrative costs. Uh, uh, I, I, have, I have not. Um, um, and so if, if that position went away, the, the only way that we could continue is to charge administrative costs. And then, and that, that position does more than just sit there uh, and, and more than just the walk-ins that, uh, I, I feel 
personally, that is very important that the public has a place to, to uh, if someone has a complaint, to come in and, and, and speak to somebody personally. All right, so we're looking for a motion from the select board, please. Well, um, if, I, if I could, I'd just like to touch on all of the public safety. Already? Yeah. Um, and, and you can certainly come back to the, the police budget, but it sounds like at this stage of the game, since we do not have anyone in the SRO and you don't have anyone applying for the SRO, this is something that the town and the sheriff's office can certainly work on over the course of this year to establish something that might work <coughs> as, at the budget next year. Does that, that seem to make, make sense to folks? And if the school, when they do their budget, wanted to contribute toward an SRO, that might make that whole process a little bit easier and a little faster to, to, to put into place. Um, because right now there's just too many unknowns to try to pass a budget tonight guaranteeing an SRO because there's no guarantees. Does the school get any help from the feds or something like that? That's what's in my head. I'm, I'm, I'll press to see if we can find it. There's got to be, with everything that's happening, things are changing so fast. There's got to be grant money and stuff out there, I hope. If there is, we'll find it. Put that in the formula. In the state and the feds, we'll see. Right? We can come up with it. All right, Mr. Town Manager. So, Aside from the ambulance and the police, the, the largest category in this uh, segment <coughs> is uh, personnel, uh, I'm sorry, for the fire department. Uh, personnel for the fire department is a, uh, an increase that has been recommended and approved by the select board uh, to pay our firefighting personnel. Now, a lot of confusion on that. They're volunteers, yes, but they're on call paid. So they get paid an hourly wage for responding to calls. Not long ago, that wage was close to minimum wage. Um, and it's recommended every year that we try to raise that up so that we are rewarding the people that are actually going into harm's way. So this year, uh, the select board has approved a rate increase from $17 an hour for the on-call responders to $21 an hour. Uh, so that's the significant difference in the personnel costs for fire. There are a couple of other line items that, that uh, probably are worth noting. Down at the very bottom of the page, it says hose maintenance. That's a new line for $4,500. Uh, with the trucks that we have now and the, the lack of staff that we have now, uh, Don and his crew have found it easier to hire someone to come in and do the hose maintenance rather than us doing it on our own. Does that sound right, Don? It's hose testing, not maintenance. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, so that's page four. If you turn to page five, you'll see the remaining fire budget. Uh, there is another additional line there for the foam. Uh, that is something that we can you know, purchase. Uh, and that line item there, I, I added to uh, maybe match some grants that we've gotten in the past to, uh, to buy some foam. But that's a, that's a, a small item. So the fire department budget is up 21%. Most of that has to do with the change in housing rate. The last segment in, uh, in public safety is animal control, and we do pay a competitive wage. We just do not respond to many calls in this, and that's, you know, I, if the animal control officer is not responding to a call, <coughs> you can rest assured that I am getting that, <coughs> uh, and I want to make sure that those stray cats are taken care of just like everybody else is concerned about, right? Um, the fact of the matter is we just, the, Damien does a good job, and he's local. He's not traveling from Smithfield like our former ACO, and he's not racking up mileage. Um, he responds to my calls, he responds to the sheriff's calls, and so uh, I, I don't see the reason this, to budget $10,000 for something that we haven't spent more than Four thousand dollars on the last couple of years, so I'm, I'm recommending the ACO budget of sixty-nine fifty. So that brings the total for public safety. My recommendation is eight fifteen six seventy five oh seven. Okay, looking for a motion from the select board. I'll make a motion that we approve the public safety budget of eight fifteen six seventy five oh seven. 
Second. I have a motion and a second for the public safety budget for $815,675.07. Any other questions? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Mr. Michon. Thank you, Mr. Renziano. Uh, you've heard the uh, discussion and the selectmen have approved the total public safety budget. What's your pleasure? So moved. $815,675.07. Second. Your second? Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, in regards to the uh, form for the fire department, I know we've seen uh, in the news lately about uh, chemicals, and I've seen the word foam used as a yes. hazardous. What are we doing that is not hazardous? Using, we're not using that phone. That you see it on TV. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Just curious, the, uh, the, the timber HP, is the demands of the fire department going to change? Are you going to need I'm different sorry, the With the demands of timber HP, I know they have like water slides. I don't know. <laughs> have, don't they, know. have they <laughs> told to have? We've, I've been down there a couple times. Right. Uh, they're keeping us right in the loop, which is very good. So and once I get up and running more, we're going to involve Scalvig uh, and Bio will be coming up. Ants will be coming over. Solar will probably down. Different right. yards. Well, we'll all do a good tour. It's a completely different animal than I think it's nuts for firefighting. Right. Problem. Thank God we got a lot of truck and Scalvig and there's a probably utilize that quite a bit. Yep. If it's anything like Sappy. But according to them, they're going to have a lot better cleaning plan, not down in Sappy, but they told us they're going to have a really good cleaning plan, so that should help us a lot. So your budget is, has, if something was to come up this year, it doesn't include anything that would uh, that would be a new demand for the fire department. Well, hopefully we're not down, I'm hoping we're not down there like Scovigan's down to Sappy. Right. So they're down to Sappy a lot. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Yeah. 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 Any further questions or discussion? So if you're ready to vote, all in favor? All in favor? So Thank you, Mr. Sean. Once again, who, who seconded that? Perfect. Thank you. Please. Okay. <laughs> uh, number three, public utilities, stormwater, 1001, 2035, <coughs> waste disposal, 1030, 20, uh, street lights, 101, hydrants, fire protection, 101511. Town manager is recommending $730,000. This is all captured on page six. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the storm drains, that's the amount that we pay currently to clean the storm drains. We uh, reimburse the sanitary district for that. Uh, I talked to Dale the other day, and he's got a bill ready for me that's going to be probably about 48000 So that will use pretty much all of what we've budgeted for this year. I'm adding 50000 to the budget this year because I am trying to pull together money to, to be the town's portion for what I'm asking, and probably pretty strongly asking the sanitary district to do a Bean Street project this year in 2023. Um, they're working on it. They're, they've got to get their board to approve it, and it's a it's a big lift for them because it's a significant amount of money for the sanitary district to raise to do all the sewer uh, on Bean Street. We have to pay for the storm drains and a portion of the paving. So I'm trying to pull together probably about. $300,000 for our portion of that, and $50,000 i am coming uh, to this line for. The other three lines are 5% you know, increases. We just signed a new contract with Waste Management, which was a 5% increase, and so that budget line reflects it. Um, what we pay for hydrants, that's impacted every time the water district raises rates, and I believe they're doing a 3% rate uh, increase. And uh, street lights, I, I think I've got this figured out. I always get this number wrong, but um, I, I bumped it to 65000 That's what Madison Electric <coughs> charges and C&P combined. Um, so that's where I come up with this budget number of 730000 Yes, Jeff. The waste disposal, is that the, the tipping fees? Right, so that, that's combined front gate, back gate. So we have five commercial haulers. Uh, waste management charges them a tipping fee and the town pays for that. 
uh, for, for the local waste that we pick up here from our residents. And then you have the back gate, and Madison is charging a portion of the back gate costs for the time to take a trip down the airport road and waterfall. All right. Seeing no other questions, looking for a motion on all of the utilities. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to recommend the town meeting for public utilities $730,000. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor? Mr. Nushan? Thank you, Mr. Villanueva. Uh, public utilities, uh, you've heard the selectman's uh, discussion and, and vote. Uh, what's your pleasure? I move the $730,000. Second. Can we get a second? That was Dick Marlowe. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Fantastic. Any further discussion, questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor. Thank you. Night number four, Public Works, General Operation 1501, Winter Roads 1505, Summer Roads 1510. We are up to page number seven. Indeed. Yep. And the town manager is recommending $799,550. So under public works, we have budgeted pay increases. Um, we carry forward some money from last year's budget to do significant pay increases. Uh, $2 an hour across the board for our highway personnel. So that's already factored into what we're operating with this year. Uh, going forward, we have uh, completed our union negotiations with them, and they took into consideration the $2 an hour that we gave them outside of the contract, and so the union agreed to a 3% increase going forward this year, and then a 4%, 4% the following year. So that, that really puts us in a favorable position, uh, because I think we have competitive wages now uh, in whomever is elected as road commissioner. And I will hand over the road commissioner phone. Uh, whomever is elected the road commissioner will have several key hires to make. And I believe that this budget uh, allows them the competitiveness to, to make those necessary hires. So they're going to need to hire a foreman, and they're going to need to hire a mechanic. And a mechanic is a, is a very big deal. Um, we have two new employees this year doing their first winter in Madison. I thought they did a bang-up job, literally, and physically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bang-up working there. But um, I, think they did, I think they did a good job, and I, I give Peter Payne a lot of credit. He stepped up and uh, really got us through this winter, and hopefully you don't have to do too much work tonight, Pete. Um, so some of the increases in regards to what's on page 7 really have to do with uh, personnel, uh, employee costs, uh, gas and diesel. Um, you know, we're, we're blowing through gas and diesel pretty good right now. Um, I just saw another bill. You can see year, year to date we've budgeted 40000 and we're at 34.6. Well, I just got another bill for about 2800 bucks. So we're going we're to top 40000 this year in diesel. And there were some months, you know, and I'm not saying anything bad about the local guys, but there were some months we were paying five, five fifty a gallon for diesel, and just just blowing right through it, unfortunately. Um, there's no questions on page seven. Page eight, you see about uh, I, I added a few thousand dollars to our equipment repair, and that, you know. We're just going to have to wait and see how much it costs us because Billy Pierce has rebuilt everything in that shop 10 times over over the last 20 years and done a fantastic job and you're not going to be able to replace it. Um, so that means a lot more stuff is going to have to go out to get fixed. Um, probably the most significant increase to highway this year has to do with TIF. In the middle of the page you'll see winter roads, road salt, calcium, and this little contract we have with the town of Solon. 
Uh, road salt and calcium, we have used TIF dollars to buy that for the last eight years. So we have it in our TIF budget. Uh, we spend about seventy to seventy-five thousand dollars on salt, uh, probably five to ten thousand dollars on calcium. And what I am recommending as part of my introduction tonight in weaning away from our dependency on TIF is over the next three years, I believe that SALT budget needs to go back into public works where it belongs. Um, so I'm recommending doing a third this year, two thirds, and then uh, the full 75,000 over uh, three years from then. Uh, obviously that has a significant increase to the bottom line of the highway department and the public works, but I, I think it's uh, realistic. Um, the other thing that we added money to instead of doing a carry forward is the third or fourth line from the bottom where it says special projects. As you can see, we've spent 28,000, 18,000, this year we spent 13,000 on special projects. We usually carry forward some money for that, but I'm gonna recommend we put a budget line in for 15,000 for special projects. Here's what special projects are. Projects we didn't know we're gonna have to do. Projects that we didn't know we'd have to pay. Things that are broken. Um, our portion of the work in front of Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, if anybody ever got in line Dunkin' Donuts, you know, there, was, there was a speed hump there uh, that was you know, bottoming out cars. That was a special project we did not budget for. It came available, the state was gonna do some work, so we said, let's put our portion in there. And that's an example of a special project. So I, I think it's important to have those special project lines uh, filled. Um, so that's where uh, I come up with that number. I didn't have the wherewithal to make it an $800,000 budget, so I'm recommending $799,550. <laughs> All right, looking for a motion from the select board. I'll make a motion $799,550 on the total public works. Second. All right, a motion and a second to recommend the town meeting $799,550 for public work. <coughs> Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, Mr. Dujan? Thank you, Mr. Reziano. Um, you've heard the discussion uh, and the explanation for total public works. What is your pleasure? So move $799,550. Second. Okay, we got a second. That was Catherine. The sound like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? All in favor. Thank you. 905 Public Arts <coughs> Recreation, Preble Avenue 2001, Recreation 2002. Town manager is recommending $87,450. So this is all found on page nine. Sorry. I'm sorry, sorry I didn't say the page. That, that's okay. <laughs> um, the categories are basically split, split into the money that we spend on the Preble Avenue site uh, and the money we spend uh, running our recreation programs. Um, increases really have to do with minimum, minimum wage. If, you, if you're not paying attention, minimum wage is 14 bucks an hour. And it will, it will be higher next year. Uh, it, it's, you know, when we were doing this just six years ago, it was seven bucks now. So it, it has an impact. And this is what we pay our students. Um, I always tell the story about the Harper brothers. Um, there's six of them. And the first Harper brother was our playground maintenance guy for seven bucks an hour. And by the time his youngest brother, got done making thirteen fifty an hour. He was pretty upset. <laughs> so basically that's it. I, I you know Chris is here to answer any of the specific questions about how we spend our money, but realistically it is it has to do with manpower for the recreation programs and it has to do with keeping the fields and the equipment up to snuff. And I think Chris does a great job with it and we work within this budget as best we can. You see some lines run over, it's because we have opportunities to refurbish equipment and we try to get it done as, as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So I've recommended a, just a shade under a 5% uh, increase. Right. Looking for a motion. I'll make a motion that we um, 
Second. I have a motion and a second for recreation of $87,450. <coughs> Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Mr. Nishan. Thank you. Uh, we're looking at the total recreation uh, budget. Um, would entertain a motion for what you'd like to do? I need a motion for $87,450 for that. Second. And moved and seconded. <coughs> Any further discussion or questions? No. Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor. All right, number six, cemeteries. Forest Hill, 2501. Cemeteries, other small. 25 to 13. And we're on page nine. Yep. Don't capture the bottom of page nine. And the town manager recommends $48,475. One of the reasons that cemetery maintenance used to be lower is that we were able to utilize uh, money that was invested in the perpetual care, care account. Uh, I don't know if you've looked at your investments over the last couple of years, but we're just not getting anything off that perpetual care account at this moment. So we've had to raise the amount that we uh, cover for most, uh, especially for Forest Hills. The, uh, we are in the beginning of a three-year contract with our mowers, so that those prices are set uh, for three years. But we're trying to chip away, and I literally mean chip away, at maintenance and repairs within Forest Hills and within our other 10 cemeteries that we maintain. Um, tipped over stones, broken stones, um, grubs, the stumps and all that stuff that, that tears it up. Uh, you'll see in this budget there are a couple of places where we're allocating more money for cemetery repairs. It really is just a drop in the bucket. We're not even talking about resurfacing stones. If you've ever, ever been up to that beautiful cemetery in Solon off of 201, it's amazing what they did there. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about just picking up broken ones. Uh, and you've got to add some money to that. So I, I've added a little bit here. You'll also see some of it in, in uh, the right, Looking for a motion. I'll move $48,475 in cemeteries. Second. Hi, right, we have a motion and a second for $48,475 in cemeteries. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion uh, carries. Mr. Sean. Thank you. Uh, for the total cemeteries, um, what's your pleasure? We move the 48,475 for those cemeteries. Second. Seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Jeff? The uh, Catholic cemetery, I remember was it last year or the year before, they had requested money for the Catholic Cemetery for these programs. So we, we don't pay for any mowing at the Catholic Cemetery, but we do offer them a community program of $1,000 that comes in the next section. So it's not under this category. Any further questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, please the vote. So the second didn't come from the rich, deep voice of Mr. Bartlett or Mr. Drew. That would be Christy, right? <laughs> 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 I'll be deeper next. <laughs> Our list is on the board, Mr. Tom Manuel. We'll go with libraries first. 3205, which is on page 10. Yeah, yes, put libraries one. first. <laughs> Tom Manager is rec recommending $136,150. This is about a 10% increase. It is, as Mr. Vigino said, at the top of page 10. Um, <coughs> there's just a couple small increases uh, in this. Uh, Julie does an excellent job with her budget. She has money that she receives from grants to do a lot of things um, to uh, keep the building in great shape. Uh, one of the things that we are running up against this year, as you can see, this year we're already 76% spent. Um, and so we're, we're trending a little bit high. One of the reasons is we're trying to encourage Julie to use her time off that she's accrued. 
that she's accrued um, over Ooh. the years. I, 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 I had today off. It was a beautiful day. We have, we, have, we, have, we have policies in place where you can't carry over much accrued vacation or sick time, and, and Julie's done such a great job for us over the years. She has a lot of accrued. So when we do encourage her to take a day off, we have to not only pay her for that day off, but we're paying for a substitute to come in. Uh, so that is uh, affecting our budget this year. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to come in right at our budget this year. But with uh, wage increases and so forth for next year, uh, I'm recommending a budget of 136, uh, 150. It doesn't show grants in there. It does not. Those, those grants that she, she receives are primarily for the building, so they're outside of, of the work. For example, she's doing a window replacements in the dome this year. And restoration. Rest, restoration. Just so we're clear, we're yeah. not getting rid of the 117-year-old <laughs> windows. They're just fixing them. <laughs> it just would be nice seeing how wonderful I she does. Read her report of the town report. Yes, yeah. I tell you all about it, Jeff. <laughs> all right, looking for a motion. I'll make a motion to go with the 136, 150. <coughs> second. I have a motion and a second for $136,150 to recommend from Madison Public Libraries at town meeting. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries, Mr. Duchamp. Yes, sir. Advisor Board, you've seen what the selectmen have done on the total library. What would you like to do? Mm -hmm. 136, 150 for the library. Oh, second. second. <laughs> sure. Man. <laughs> Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor. All right, we move on to community <coughs> service. Community programs, 3501. General assistance, 3506. Service organizations, 3510. We are again on page 10. Page 10. Page 10. Page 10. the bottom half of page 10. We, we break this community services category into three uh, sections. Uh, one is community programs, then there's the general assistance program, and then service organizations. Um, most of the community programs have stayed the same. This is, uh, to Mr. Drew's point, this is the category where we do offer some assistance to St. Sebastian's, uh, mainly because there are obviously many Madison residents and veterans. Um, there's a new uh, request in this year for the Madison Business Alliance uh, for $3,000 to help them pay their administrator. Um, the Business Alliance has been around for over a decade, and for years, They've done a great job of meeting and planning lots of things, but as soon as those meetings are over, there's nobody there to do those things, to put the ideas in place. So this year they did um, hire an administrator, and I think she's really doing an excellent job, um, but they're requesting funds from the town to help pay for that administrator uh, at $3,000. Um, the other traditional items that we have in there, Lake Association, uh, the Lake Association does use their 5500 to fund the uh, monitor at the boat landing to make sure no invasive species get in there. Uh, that 5500 is just a, a fraction of the cost, and, and I know that in future budgets they would like to come to the town for an increase uh, in that, but they chose to stay at 5500 this year. Uh, we have our contribution to food cupboards. Um, any questions on what we offer for community service support? <clears throat> this has been pretty s standard for the last few years. Uh, general assistance, uh, in the budget this year, I, I wanted to break down what we're providing for general assistance. So you see some for heating fuel, personal items, rent assistance, utility assistance, and burials, cremations. That was a new rule that the state uh, put in place about four years ago that uh, if an individual comes to a town um, and the person who died was a resident of that town, um, they could qualify for reimbursement. And that, that happens a couple times a year. Um, this year, by far, it's been rent assistance. And you all know the news, you know the housing situation, you know that KB Cap had received a ton of federal money and they were helping with rent assistance and they ran out of money in November and it kind of caught everybody off guard. Uh, so we do provide a lot of rent assistance. 
you, what you see reflected in this budget here is just a portion of it because the town was fortunate to got enough to get two grants. And so we got two back-to-back -back grants from the United Way uh, for, for rent assistance. And United Way, this grant uh, will provide uh, one month of back rent if a person's in trouble with, and could be uh, being evicted. And we utilize that for the, for the people that are making too much income to qualify for general assistance, but not enough income if they lose their job or something like that, or they pay their rent. Uh, so we, we've utilized both those programs, and I think we've done a fairly good job uh, providing those that assistance this year. And then the final category at the bottom are the four categories that we uh, provide assistance for, the senior citizens, for Anson Madison, uh, the Humane Society, Hospice Volunteers, and Spectrum Generations. So that's where we come up with the total budget figure of 71 to 7. Looking for a motion. I make a motion for community services, $71,700. Second. I have a motion and a second community service programs for $71,700 for recommendation to town meeting. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, advisory board uh, on the subject of community services. Anybody have any questions or discussion? Uh, we're going to move. Move 71,700. <laughs> oh my god, they were dead. There we go. That is a second. The, the tie goes to the former court. Can <laughs> <laughs> I get the second? <laughs> so we have a motion and a second for 71,700. Any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor is the vote. Thank you. All right, we will go with town owned properties, then we'll take a break. Um, town owned property, Old Point Avenue, 4001, Main Street, 4002, Town Signs, 4007, uh, Boat Landing, 4008, and Western Avenue, 4010. Town manager is recommending $35,900. All right, we're on page 11, and uh, the, the lion's share of this budget it impacts this building that we're in right now. And there have been many discussions over the last couple of years as to, to what to do with this building. Um, but at the very least, we've got to spend some money uh, to, to upkeep it. Um, I will be working with some folks from GoLab who have offered their services to uh, help get some estimates so we can seek some federal grant dollars. Um, the uh, <laughs> estimates would be for windows, exterior doors, floors, bathrooms. Um, and just so everybody's aware of it, if we seek federal dollars, I would recommend that we seek federal dollars to utilize this 1960s space to provide childcare in our region. Child care is a huge need. Uh, and even if you have people popping up left and right, the child care services, it's not nearly enough. That's why GoLabs is interested in this. But that, that's a longer term goal for the immediate budget. Um, the increases have to do with heating fuel uh, and some repairs to the building. Uh, you can see in that little highlighted section there, we're, we budget about $2,000 for repairs and maintenance. We were blowing that out of the water this year, <laughs> literally because we had a frozen pipe uh, water leak during that really, really bad uh, storm where the wind blew just pulled below. Um, so we've had to spend several thousand dollars. There is an insurance claim on that, so we may be getting able to reimburse that line. But um, very clearly, you can see, if you look all the way down the bottom of the yellow line, we budgeted 26.5 for all town properties. We spent 25.2. Um, so we're going to exceed this budget article this year, and uh, we're going to do our best to try to keep it down. Um, but for heating fuel, this building uses about 4,000 gallons of fuel a year, and most of it, I can feel, goes right out those windows. Uh, so obviously, you know, it's a give and take uh, in that regard. Um, and Mr. Minziano always complains about how hot I keep it in here for meetings. Um, so, 
That brings me to a budget of 35,900 for all town owned properties. And the ice rink? So the ice rink, um, I know that there are certain people that hold ice rinks more dear than I do. But we have sold a portion of the Western Avenue property. If in the, in the event that that property is a construction zone, this time next year, I doubt we'll use that site for an ice rink. So we will probably have to relocate the ice rink. Uh, I put a little bit of money in there for some miscellaneous things. There are other folks uh, that are looking at grants for relocating and maybe upgrading an, an ice rink. I, I'm not a big uh, believer when it comes to climate change, but the reality is, folks, as much effort as Joe Hayden puts into that ice rink, three weeks a year. Three weeks a year. I know it's great for skaters, and I know hockey fans, uh, yeah, go Black Bears, <laughs> right? But, <laughs> but it, just, it just doesn't make sense to budget a ton of money for an ice rink until we know what we're actually doing. All right, looking for a motion for 35900 I'll make a motion that we do 35 for the time property. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second for $35,900 for town owned property. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Mr. John. Oh, thank you. Uh, for total town owned property, what's your budget? Yeah, I'm okay. So the $35,900 for the town owned property. Second. We will second 35900 for town owned property. Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor. Thank you, Mr. Sean. Okay, at, that, at this point, we'll take a 15 minute break. I have a break. Senator, I can throw out the bedroom in this day and age. This should call it a salad. Okay, that one's not. Today's job is to be able to get a new answer. I'll find out who the rep is. I'll find out who the rep is. I'll find out who the rep is. Oh, yeah. that we have left over in highway equipment. Um, so we decided to go ahead and put out bids for a, a single axle plow truck to replace the one that does the Weston Avenue part of town. That truck is about 22 years old. Um, it is a truck that has been retrofit many times over the years. Um, and it's, it's a, I got to, to learn quite a bit about it, not that they let me drive it, but uh, I, I watched the new, our newest employee try to drive it, and he came back after the first storm. First storm of the year was a bad storm. It was 11 to 12 inches of heavy snow. And he came back and he said, I, I can't drive this. I can't, I can't figure it out. I can't steer it. Uh, so we ended up having to move people around a little bit. And Peter put different people in different positions. We ended up using a, a 20 year experience guy to drive this truck. Just, it's just something. It's not something a new person can learn on. Um, and it's to the point where it's dangerous. So we have replaced that truck with the money we had left over from last year. 
the other truck that needs replacing is a wheeler truck. And I, I sound like I know so much now because I've been road commissioner for seven months. But <coughs> a wheeler has the extra wheels on it. Uh, and that's used out of town. Right? If I'm getting too technical for you, Kathy, let me know. That's a, it's used for out of town roads. Um, it can carry much more weight. And the one that we have right now that needs to be replaced is uh, 19 years old. Back in the days where we were replacing equipment more regularly, we were trying to do a 15-year cycle on, on plow trucks. But as you can see, we still have two trucks that are 20, 22 years old. So the money that I'm set, trying to set aside this year would go towards a, a wheeler truck and a single axle truck, and we'd have both of them replaced. When you buy a truck now, you are working years out. So if we put an order in right now, it won't be available until the spring of 2024. So it's about a year away. Uh, and then you have to raise money to equip it with the plow and the wing and all the things that come on it. And, uh, so we're in, in process of trying to upgrade our fleet. Uh, and, and that would bring us pretty close to almost all of our vehicles within five years old. Um, and that, that's a good position. Uh, road surface management is simply paving. Um, we're going to utilize some of the money that we have left over this spring to do some roads over on Town Street, Winter Street, and, no, I'm sorry, not Winter Street. Town Street, Summer Street, and Spring Street. Um, this 230000 that we're raising, there's a couple out in East Madison that we're doing. Um, Beach Road that goes down by um, the low public access point there over by Lakewood. Um, we're doing a little bit on Naomi Avenue. Uh, to try to upgrade that uh, road a little bit. Uh, and then we're doing the rest of the work in town here uh, in uh, John Street and Tom Street. So that's basically what we're looking at for road surface management. Um, the sidewalk capital and the cemetery capital, I'll be frank with you, um, I, I can go either way on whether we raise th this money because we raised $50,000 for these two items in the current budget. And we're going to have to really hustle to spend that money by, by June 30th. Um, cemetery repairs, like I said, there's a lot of work that can be done. Um, but I don't know if we have the manpower to get it all done uh, this spring and summer. Uh, sidewalk capital, um, Peter Payne and I have taken a look at some of our sidewalk inventory. It's not as bad as it has been years before. Um, so I, I'm putting it out there to raise a small amount of money just because you never want to get in the habit of not raising money, um, especially for projects like cemeteries and, and sidewalks. But you know, in the interest of, of saving money in this budget, I could, I could go either way um, on these two items for $25,000. So that's, that's my thoughts as I put together uh, this budget. I did talk with Don about fire equipment, and we were just having a discussion at the break. Um, you know, if you do need to set aside for another truck, you need to start doing it soon. Um, but we just bought a $307,000 uh, pump, pumper tanker truck, and so that does meet one of our needs. But one of our next oldest unit um, is a 95, so it'll be 30 years old before you know it. So, uh, so that we didn't see the sense of urgency to set aside money for fire this year. That's my rambling on uh, capital. So. Can I ramble on that too? Yes, sir. Speaking as a former firefighter for the town of Madison, the new truck is awesome. But, like Tim just said, it'll be 30 years old here, the next one. <coughs> Setting aside $50,000 a year would help on the pocket in the future. <coughs> That would be my recommendation, at least $50,000 a year. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Lewine. Tim, if you don't have it, the manpower as far as the cemetery, um, because I frequently go by that one in Solon, um, and it looks very good. What is, I mean, are there companies out there that come and do that? I know you were talking about just fixing them, the ones that are broken and stuff, but right. what, we've got 11 in town, right? Not including the Catholic cemetery. 
So what is it? I know there's one out on Kincaid Road, and that's quite old. And to see what you've done at the Solon, or if they've done at the Solon one, is just it's amazing. very nice. Yeah, I've always had the intention of trying to talk with Lane Allos or somebody at the Solon to find out how that project got done. Uh, because I know they didn't raise it from taxation. So I, I, I imagine that was a special fundraising project that, that got that done. Oh, so it's not tied into that was a town deal? Yeah. I thought it was part of the... No, that, um, just because just that church sits there, that church has that little corner and the town owns the rest of it. So that's a, that's a town cemetery. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm looking for a motion um, on capital expenditures. Town manager recommended 430. We just heard of a plea for 50000 more for the fire department. It's going to wait for a truck. What is the board's pleasure? What do you think? If you don't start now, you're going to hurt later. Well, I guess the question I would have is, if you want to get rid of the 225s and switch it to the 50, could you do that? And that still leaves at 430. You could, but I just assume leave those 25s and every, something always comes up. Okay. And if we're going to add to it, let's add 50 to it and go with that. I mean, that's, that would be at 480. I'll make a motion for 480000 on total capital. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion for 480000 for total capital, adding 50000 to put away for a fire truck under 60920-30. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Mr. Duchar. Thank you. Uh, you've heard the uh, selectmen's comments and, and the discussion about total capital. Um, what's your pleasure? I make the motion that four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Second. Moved and seconded for four hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Is there any discussion, questions, comments? Seeing none. All those in favor? Uh, number 11, overdraft article, to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to use up to $25,000 for undesignated revenue in the event of overdrafts on machine events or emergencies. Any use of this contingency arrangement must be voted on at a select board meeting and expenditures made to be listed in the subsequent town report. Total transfer of undesignated <coughs> revenue shall not exceed $25,000 within the fiscal year. Transfer of undesignated revenues in excess of $25,000 must be authorized by a town meeting vote. And I believe we had this in the last year's budget, in yeah. previous budgets. This, this would be the fourth year in a row that we've uh, recommended this article. Uh, we like to have it in town meeting that it's, it's recommended by the select board and the uh, advisory committee. Uh, and we have used it out of the two out of the last three years. Um, and I think part of that is we, we try to run pretty tight budgets. Um, our costs on waste management uh, overran uh, two out of the last three years, and so we have had to uh, have the select board uh, utilize this. Um, looking at town-owned properties this year, we're going to use it in town-owned properties. Too. All right, so well, I guess we're looking for a motion to recommend yes. The overdraft article. So essentially, what I need from both parties is um, a motion to add this to the town meeting one. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to add the overdraft article to the. All right. We have a motion and a second to add the overdraft article to the uh, town meeting warrant uh, with a recommendation of yes. Correct, Mr. Chairman. Correct. All right. Any other questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 
All in favor, the motion carries. Mr. Duchamp. Thank you. Uh, regarding the overdraft article, uh, which is Article 5 on the back page of the explanation, uh, what's your pleasure on that? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Uh, to approve the use of up to 25000 from the designated. Uh, any further discussion, questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? <laughs> I'm done thinking. I want to go back to the fire truck. <laughs> 20 years ago, I was a lot faster. Tim, as far as this 3% increase, how have you put into the revenue potential increases in taxes? Did you hear Mr. Vinciano when he said we weren't going to talk about taxes? <laughs> well, no, stop spending more money than it's on this piece of paper. That opens the door. So right now, with our, our valuation as it is, and, and likely to increase because of home values. And business values. Well, okay. You, all right. <laughs> Don't? Okay. <laughs> and values. Because industrial values are set. The, the dirty little secret is when your home value goes up and the town total valuation goes up and the mill rate goes down, the Eagle Creeks of the world pay less in taxes than you pay more. So that's the, that's the problem with the situation the way it is with the home sales going up. That's, that skewed this whole thing. But let's say our valuation is roughly 400 million. Every time you raise the amount in taxes by $100,000, that's 25 cents on the mill rate. So right now, the results of, of what you've discussed so far in the budget is to bring to the taxpayers uh, an additional $150,000, $160,000. Uh, which will be about 37 cents on the mill rate. But it's not that simple because you don't know where we're going to end up with the school or county budget, and we really don't know where we're going to end up with the valuation of your home. I'm, I'm telling people right now, if your home is valued by, at $150,000 right now, Probably when you get your tax bill, that home will be valued at 165, 170 thousand. So that's going to go up, but because budgets go up too, the mill rate won't go down, and that, that's the tricky part we run into. And to Mr. Vindiano's point, we can speculate all night long, but we won't know what that mill rate is till August. So. Thank you for that explanation. But I was really focusing on the mill. You've got those. Taxes going up, correct? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I got some bad news from Shirley this week. One of the things I was counting on were solar arrays. Uh, we got three solar arrays that are complete now in Madison. Yeah. The state has exempted those from taxation. And we got reports in for the status of those solar arrays as of April 1st. So they're built, but they're not operational. And so I said to Shirley, I said, they're built, all, all the stuff's there. We can at least get some reimbursement from the state, right? She goes, nope, Maine Revenue says, until it's operational, you can't tax it. So that's about $15 million that I was counting on uh, for some tax, tax revenue coming in. But the state's, you know, <laughs> because the state's paying the taxes and the taxpayer's not, that was the deal that they made with the solar operator. Um, the state says, we don't want to pay until they're operational. <coughs> I, I think our fire department is going to need some help from the mill <coughs> because my experience in watching the pellet plants around New England, yeah. they all catch fire a lot. <laughs> and that's going to be a big one down there. The one in East Corinth burned, I think, never even tried to build it back. So I, I was just wondering if the increase in taxes coming from the mill would help do the $50,000 for the new truck. That's where I was. Why didn't you to. ask it that way the first time? <laughs> 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 so, okay.
let's say we get, we get about $45,000 in taxes from no labs right now. Next year, we'll get probably $90,000 in their real estate and $60,000 from their business equipment. So yeah, we, we should see an additional $100,000 in tax revenues from Gold Lab next year. The year after that will be higher, but next, next year we should see. I feel better about the 50 million. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on. All right, so that, that was Article 5 that I just did. So, <laughs> Article 19. Is that how you want to go with that, Tim? Yeah, that's fine. It, and what Mr. Benzino is referring to is the back page of the original handbook. And uh, be, because there's more that we need to do than what's on the agenda. And I appreciate your patience with me. Um, okay, so these, the Article 19 that's uh, recommended is one of two ARPA articles. And it's recommended that we designate our ARPA funds at town meeting. So Article 19 would dedicate $50,000 in ARPA funds for highway equipment purchases. This is 50,000 that would go toward equipping those new trucks because it's going to take 50 to 100,000 dollars to get miles and wings and all the associated equipment. Um, and then the, the next one, Article 20, is road reconstruction projects, 150,000 dollars from ARPA funds. This goes back to my conversation about Bean Street. So I'm trying to build up some of our money for Bean Street uh, through ARPA funds through what we've raised uh, in the regular budget. So, so if you're looking at the agenda, these are just backwards. Oh, my mistake. All right. So we're looking for a, a yes vote on Article 19 and 20. We'll, leave them together. we'll do that. All right. Any questions? Tim, yes, is this the end of the ARPA money, what you've got in this budget? That's a good question. Yes. Uh, this, the short answer is this is the end of the allocation of the ARPA money. Last year, we took to town meeting money for Lower Mills Road. We added 50000 into the fire truck purchase for last year. Uh, and we did some business grants. And we have set aside some money uh, for repairs to the town office. So all that's been allocated. Uh, this is just allocate the rest of it. By, by the law, we have to have it all allocated by the end of 2024. We have to have it all spent by the end of 2026. Yeah. All right, so looking for a motion to approve yes recommendation on Article 19 and 20. I'll make a motion that we approve yes on Article 19 and 20. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve Article 19 and 20 with a yes recommendation <coughs> to town meeting. All those in favor? All in favor. Motion carries. Mr. Nushan. Thank you. Um, we're looking at <coughs> Articles 19 and 20 regarding the ARPA funds. Make a motion to approve Article 19 and Article 20 as written. And we have a motion to approve Article 19 and Article 20 as written. A second. second. And a second. Uh, any further discussion and questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor. Okay, so we have three more articles that we want to discuss. Yes, and I apologize, I didn't get them on the agenda when I sent out the agenda, but I figured while you're here, um, we could get them done and get them ready for town meeting. So again, our, what I've referred to here is Articles 21, 22, and 23. 21 and 22 have to do with how we're going to deal with capital money that's left over if we're going to carry it forward. Traditionally, over the last years, the select board has simply done this in August. Whatever money we have left over in capital the, at a selectman's meeting, they would just move to, to carry it forward and, and do that. Upon our request, Maine Municipal Legal said, you really ought to do this at town meeting. If you're going to have money that was approved by town meeting and you're going to carry it forward for the next year, you probably have to have an article that says, this is what we're doing with this money and let the town meeting voters vote on it. So this is a change of what we've done in the past, but we're trying to you know, be as upfront with our, our town meeting as, as possible. So this 103500 in Article 21, that's the money I was referring to that we have set aside 
last year town meeting, but we have not spent on highway equipment yet. Uh, this is the single axle truck that uh, we have taken bids on and we have uh, secured uh, a bid for a truck that would cost <coughs> this much. So I, I need to, to have the board and the advisory committee recommend to carry forward this amount. Now, there is another way to go, but our auditors aren't always in favor of it. And that would be creating capital reserve accounts. Some towns have capital reserve accounts that they simply put money into every year, and that money is automatically carried forward because it does, it's, it's, a, it's in a separate account used for that uh, amount. Our auditors traditionally have not been big fans of that. They would rather see uh, carry forward our <coughs> Uh, so that's why I'm recommending uh, to do that. And so you can see Article 22, um, I'm anticipating we're not going to spend all of our Forest Hill Cemetery money. Uh, that's why I'm putting a figure there of 15000 Now, the question would be, well, what if we do spend it all? Uh, or what if we need to carry forward more than 15000 You can amend an article uh, for a town meeting up to seven days before town meeting. So obviously, uh, by the beginning of June, we'd have a much better idea of what we would need to carry forward. Uh, so essentially, I'm just looking for uh, support from both of the board and the committee on this carry forward idea. Uh, so if you want to take that as, as one vote, then I'd save uh, Article 23 and, and talk about undesignated fund balance uh, separately. All right, so we're looking for a motion for Article 21, which says to, to see what see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to carry forward $103,500 unspent capital funds to be designated for the purchase of highway uh, highway equipment. And then Article 22, to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to carry forward $15,000 capital funds to be designated for repairs to Forest Hill Cemetery. Looking for a motion on to send the town meeting a yes on Article 21. So moved on Article 21 and 22 as read. Thank you, Mr. Okay. All right, a motion and a second to send to town meeting a yes recommendation on Article 21 and 22. All those in favor? All in favor, the motion carries. Mr. Nuchon. Thank you. Uh, you heard the selectman's action on Article 21 and Article 22. What's your pleasure? Question. Yes. The 50000 for the fire engine, is that in the same is what you're looking for in Article 21? That is, that you, you haven't raised it yet. You haven't raised it yet. This is money we raised last year. Oh, okay. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Um, move we approve Article 21 and 22 as presented. Second. And we've been seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All in favor. All right, Article 23, to see if the town will vote to use $650,000 from undesignated fund balance to taxes. To offset taxes. To offset taxes. It's going. <laughs> so traditionally we've done $400,000. Um, revenue sharing from the state of Maine has been continually stronger than what we have budgeted for. Um, and this is my recommendation in lieu of doing non-capital carry forwards in, in August. Um, by the combination of those two things, I, I think we would have enough in our undesignated fund balance to, to offset this. As of today, uh, I should say, as of June 30th, we've got about $2 million in undesignated fund balance. Um, it's not unusual for us to carry $1.3, $1.4 million, so I, I think we can handle this. Can we use 50000 of this to pay for that fire truck? <laughs> In a roundabout way, you are. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Not going to be a direct so, way. <laughs> you know. It's just a paper thing. I get it. But, uh, that you, way, the, <coughs> the, board, the board has spent it, and then we found money to pay for it. And, uh, wouldn't that be better to build a town hall for that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so if, if you look, if you ever... <coughs> And, and I know that you enjoy going to town meeting. And, but if you ever go to other towns' town meetings or look at their warrants, you'll see that there's nine different ways to skin these cats. Mm -hmm. And very often, other town meetings will have a warrant to do just what you said. 
say, we raise $50,000 for a fire truck out of undesignated fund balance, rather than out of taxation. Mm -hmm. So you, you can do that. But at the end of the day, when you calculate your taxes, you're taking all this information and it's all kind of going into the same pot of stew. And it's all working its way out in. Now to do what you're asking about would be to make a motion to take $700,000 from undesignated fund balance. Knock yourself out. <laughs> so you're saying the same, same pair of pants, just different pocket. <laughs> You're saying that. <laughs> did you say? Did you say that you undesignated fund balance? You expect to be around two. So the the June thirtieth, twenty two mm -hmm. audit put it right around two million dollars, right. and I've already factored in that there was money designated there to pay for that fire truck. Okay. And so we've, we've I've backed all those factors out. Uh, and that's why I still think that we're comfortable at, at this level. Uh, but it, it, is, it is a give and take. It's not, it, this means I'm not going to bring any carry forward in August to, to the board for, for non-capital, like what we mm -hmm. usually do for higher, highway and fire and all that. Well, <coughs> that's the objective of these articles is to, to avoid having that carry over discussion, right? right? According to the audit people, you should have, you should have roughly, based on this budget, you should have roughly $1.2 million in reserve. Right. right. So if we said, bump this into 700 oh, to cover the 50, yeah. you'd still be within the audit percentages. I, I think so, based on the revenues that we're taking in. The one thing to be concerned about with revenues is uh, excise tax. Yep. We, we've, we've peaked yep. on excise tax, and either people aren't buying as many cars or the, the price of cars is kind of caught up. And so we used to take in 900 and some odd thousand dollars of excise tax. We'll, we'll be lucky to take eight, 825 this year. Um, so I figured that in, but, but it, it's, the, it's the revenue sharing that continues to be strong. And the, the slippery slope, and, and Mr. Zbarge knows this, of carrying money from undesignated fund balance, is once you get used to a number as high as 700,000, it's awfully hard to go backwards. And, and then you want to be 800, then you want to be 900. And so, and that's, I just, I just don't know if revenue sharing is going to continue to be that strong for us uh, in the future. I can tell you that revenue sharing will continue to be that strong for you. They just passed a $9.885 billion biannual budget, yeah. which includes full funding for revenue sharing yeah, for the next biennium. So revenue sharing will be strong for you. Yeah. So there's a new government. So. <laughs> it's got two years. I like Mr. Schindler's idea better than my idea of getting it from <laughs> 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 But I think both boards are pretty good. That's oh. certainly right. So should we back ours off? Did you have the vote already? Yes. Yes. Do mm that. -hmm. We can amend it. <laughs> I didn't let anything down. You guys didn't vote. You guys didn't vote yet. Oh. No, you didn't vote. You guys 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 didn't vote. Uh, the we same amount, seven hundred thousand dollars for Article Twenty Three. Uh, they do both. Any further discussion? At least. Seeing Thank none. You. All those in favor? Stop that up. Stop all in favor? Is the vote? No stop that money now. All right. Select board concerns. Mr. Moody. None, sir. Mr. Dean. None, sir. What? Any advisory board concerns? 
Hi, I'd like to see none. So I guess I would like to thank all the advisory board members for giving up your time to come out. And hopefully we can be at town meeting. Uh, any other citizens' concerns? Thanks for dinner. <laughs> Seeing none, looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to second to adjourn. All those in favor? Please use the steps and walkways carefully. Yeah, there's a little ice. Yeah, the railing was ice when I first